Good morning and welcome to the replay. I will be right with you. Good morning, Ariel. How are you? I'll be right there. Getting all my cameras and everything set up. I'll be right there. Hold on. Okay, just about there, guys. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Okay. Hello, 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 everybody. Good morning. Let me see if I have it right finally. Here we go. There we are. Baby chicks. Oh, I know. I'm so excited about my babies. They are stinking cute. Good thing they don't stink. They're pretty cute, though. Um, I hold every single one of my baby chicks that I'm watching right now every day. At least once a day, I go in there. Good morning, Leslie. And I play with those babies. And the babies were actually the inspiration for the project that I'm going to be doing this morning. I actually thought of this this morning, so I've been busy um, cutting some wood and painting a little bit. So we're gonna get right along to my project. Good morning, Leslie. How are you today? I know I forgot to put my little uh, my little hint about what our project was, but it's because I really just thought about it. So we are gonna get moving. So let me get my screen all set up so that you can see my project. You can see my coffee. My coffee's here. And um, we're going to get this party started. So if you are brand new, um, be sure to hit that share tab. If you are a designer, please don't hit that share tab. Otherwise, I appreciate it if you do. Um, that helps grow my algorithm and my audience so that more people can learn about Chalk Couture. So as you can see, I just have two little pieces of wood that I've been busy as one of Santa's elves. I've been down down here i've been painting these i sanded them i cut them and they painted them and i think they're all ready to go so we are going to make a little sign for my daughter's chicken coop so at this point we have a bucket full of baby chicks they're really seriously in a galvanized bucket but we are going to be making a little sign for when she does have her coop already and she's in the process of uh, building that now so i pulled out my um my vintage truck add-ons and one of them one of the pieces on here says farm fresh so this is from the summer 
I'm pretty sure it's the summer. Oh my, I'm gonna have to check that. But I think it's from the summer add-on collection. And this one has all kinds of things. Uh, now I gotta check. Let me see what it is. Farm push. Oh, this is actually the fall version. So it's the fall vintage Chuck add-on. And we're gonna be using this portion of it um, where it says farm fresh. And because I didn't have the word eggs, we're gonna make them with some letters. So I've got E, G, D, S. The D is actually just to represent the extra G that we're gonna add in there. So we're gonna make it say farm fresh eggs. Sound good? Teach me your ways. <laughs> oh, Ariel, absolutely. There's lots of information about how to use it. It's called Switcher Studio. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just to trim my transfer down. Um, these have nice lines that you can cut on. If you're not a perfect cutter, don't worry about it. Um, it's very forgiving. Well, that's gonna go there. And I'm gonna move this to the side for now. And before I even get into the chalky part, I left this wood a little bit rough, and I did that for a reason. I love the way rustic wood looks. So I look, want it to look a little bit aged and a little bit grungy. Good morning, Rebecca. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a technique that I learned recently and I used uh, in my bathroom on a mirror that we framed. So I'm gonna just take one of our little uh, chocolate Couture trays and put a tiny bit of slate blue paint in it. I'm going for that, um, you know, kinda, I haven't used this in a while. Is it clogged up? Yep, it's clogged. Um, I'm going for that look where it's, it looks like it's been out there attached to the coop for a long time. So there, got plenty. What I'm gonna do is, as I said, I left this pretty rough and I'm going to take a disinfectant wipe, one of our coveted disinfectant wipes. I have a very small package and I'm being very careful with them because you still cannot get disinfectant wipes where I live. So I'm just gonna take the disinfectant wipe and dab it into the paint and I'm gonna pat most of it off. But I'm just going to rub it very lightly over the rough wood just to give it a little bit of um, gray, kind of a gray tint. And it's going to be uneven, which is what exactly I'm looking for. And I think this is going to look pretty cool. Can you see how that highlights the, the blade lines that are in this wood? This makes it look a lot more interesting. I'm gonna quickly do the, the sides of this in the, in the back. And this should dry in just a moment. Yeah, I like that look. The mirror that I did in my bathroom was super, super rough. And it, oh gosh, it came out really nice. The wood was really old and I first brushed it lightly, just like I'm doing right now with um, white. And then I went over it with a teal color. It's, just, it's beautiful. Everybody notices that when they go in my bathroom in the mirror. All right, I'm not going to do the back for now. We can do that later. But this looks really good. Have you ever done this before? Let me see if I can hold that up so you can see a little better. I'll take a picture of it later and you'll see. I will post it later. All right. So I could have painted this green also, but it wouldn't have brought out the grain of the wood like, like doing it this way does. This kind of forces it into those little holes and scrapes and markings that the wood has, and that's what I like. You can leave it thicker in some places if you want to, or blend it. All up to you. You to your piece. I love that too, Ariel. So if you are new, welcome, welcome. Where are you from? Tell me where you're from. I am. Um, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Susan Tapley, and I am an independent designer with Chalk Couture. I've been with the company for almost three years. I've loved every moment of it. And I help people do high-end DIY projects like this one. High-end chicken coop DIY. Yeah. Okay. I think it's going to be very classy. All right, I'm gonna put that to the side for now and just hit it with my heat tool for a second to dry it really, really well. Can you see any of the, um, let me put my light on there. It's really hard to see in my cameras. 
Yay, Massachusetts! Baby wipes would do the same thing, yeah. Um, you can also use a rag. If you have a rag, you can use that. Whatever you like. And I might actually just distress this a little bit more when we're done. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to be using Farm Fresh on the top and then spell the word eggs on the bottom. So as always, the first thing that I do is write on the back of my transfers, Farm Fresh. And I'm also going to write my initials on the back side, and I'll tell you why. So first of all, the reason I write on the back of all of my transfers is because if I'm working with a lot of different transfers, it helps to, to know which carrier sheet, that's what this white paper is called, which carrier sheet to replace your transfer on. That's not the case this time, but it is helpful when you're working with a whole bunch of different ones. Writing on the back also reminds you not to reattach your transfer to this side of the carrier sheet. So our transfers actually have a silk screen that runs through the whole design, and they're very, very sticky on the back side. So knowing that, you want to attach the sticky side of your transfer after you've used them. You wash them, you dry them sticky side up, and you reattach them to the carrier sheet, and you reapply it to the silky, smooth side of the paper. This side of the paper is kind of a matte feel to it, and if you reattach your transfer to the wrong side, the, the side that I wrote on, it can be really tricky to um, remove it later on to use again. So this reminds me not to reattach it to that side. I also put my initials on the front and back um, in case I am working with a group of people or I've loaned my transfers out. I want to be sure that I get mine back. So where is my folding cloth? Okay, I seem to have misplaced my fuzzing towel. Um, this one actually isn't too, too sticky, so I'm not going to worry about it. But sometimes our transfers are very, very sticky. And that can make it hard to remove it from your surface. So you do something we call fuzzing. And what fuzzing is, is, is attaching the sticky side of your transfer to something like a towel or your jeans or a t-shirt, just to pick up a little bit of lint um, to make it less sticky. It'll come off of your surface a lot easier. And that's also really important if you're doing a layering project because um, if, if your transfer is really, really sticky and you're layering one color of chalk on top of a different color of chalk, the transfer can actually pull the first layer off. So you want to be sure that you fuzz them. And again, that's just adding a little bit of lint from your fabric onto um, the back side. You have a hundred boxes of baby wipes. Oh my gosh. Do you have a baby? Good morning, Nicole. Do you have a baby? I know you have a couple puppies. Okay, so what I've just done is I've taken a small squeegee, this is actually a mini squeegee, and I've smoothed this design down to make sure there are no, there are no bumps, or bubbles, or folds in my design transfer. And today I'm going to be working with black velvet chalk paste. And this is not paint at all, it is actually a creamy form of chalk that goes on wet, dries hard in a matter of minutes. Um, it's water soluble, so if you are using this on a non-porous surface such as chalkboards, windows, metal, or glass, you can wash it right off whenever you want to and redesign. So what I'm using today is a porous surface. Wood will soak up any liquids that you put on top of it, and I'm going to be using it on here, but I would not attempt to wash it off. You'll have a mess. I promise me. I promise you, I should say. So I've got that nice and stirred up. You want it to be about the consistency of cake batter. If it feels any thicker than that, you just add a tiny bit of distilled water. I have a little spray bottle that I normally use. And um, distilled water will keep it from becoming moldy That because sometimes uh, tap water has a little bit of bacteria in it that can wreak havoc. <laughs> okay, you better get a baby. <laughs> So Ariel, just remember not to use them on your transfers. You can clean your um, transfers using disinfectant wipes, but not baby wipes. The alcohol can damage your transfers. So I'm going to scoop out a little bit of chalk paste on my little, my small mini squeegee, and I'm going to smooth it all over the design, just like you would do if you were buttering toast. That is my, my phrase all the time, like buttering toast. It's so simple. So cover all of the open area where the screen is. 
the screens are there to um, allow you to have so much more detail than you ever would with a stencil. So I'm just spreading it all over and covering the design. You want to try to use long, smooth strokes if possible. Not always possible, but if you can, it's even better. If you're doing little itty bitty uh, little strokes and trying to like paint, you can dry your chalk paste um, in that way. And you always want to remember to remove your chalk paste before it's dried on top of your transfer. So after you're done, you're going to go back over the whole design and scoop off all of that excess chalk and put it right back in your jar to use for a different project. There is very, very little waste when you're using our products. Okay. Looks good. Try to get all those lines out from your squeegee. But this one, this one came out pretty nice. Now the fun part happens when you peel and reveal your design. Da, da, da. Love it. I love it. My daughter's going to love it too. Alright, I'm getting messy here. I don't know if I've got chalk on me or, or paint, but I tend to get into my work. But yeah, okay, we'll just leave that there. I'm going to get a paper towel. All right, does anyone have any questions of anything I've done so far? Please, please ask. I'm happy to uh, help you out with that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use my heat tool to dry this just a little bit. If I leave this, um, oh, leave it just like it is for about 10 minutes, it'll be totally dry. But if you want to do it a little bit faster, you can use a heat tool like I'm using today. Um, you can also use a hair dryer or just let it air dry, whatever you prefer. If you're using a heat tool like this one, keep it moving. It's super hot heat. And if you leave it in one place for too long, it'll actually burn your chalk. You can watch it bubble. So keep it moving. Thanks, Ariel. Where's all my regulars today? I'm missing some people. Okay, now I'm gonna put this to the side for now. We're gonna do a little bit more distressing on this, I think. We just have to grunge it up. Gotta, gotta. And the bottom part, I'm gonna do eggs on here. And um, I did cut out a D just so that I can use it for placement to see exactly where I wanna put my letters. Move that up so you can see. And I think I'm gonna start in the center. Yeah, I can't spell. So it'll be like this and like this. It's going to be a dyslexic kind of day, I guess. So I'm going to make sure that I have written on the backs of my transfers, two of them I've used before, but these two I have not. So I've got a G and a D. Okay, so we're going to be using the G twice. So in order to do that without washing in between, you want to work pretty quickly. Put this, I'm thinking right about, this is always hard placement. That look about right, right about there. Okay, I want that to end right about in halfway mark. So. Okay, cross your fingers. All right, I'm just gonna rub this one down with my finger. Try to get those edges as tight as you can, especially if you're using an uneven surface like this. Remember, it's really rough. I'm gonna grab my squeegee and just cover that G. The next part's gonna be tricky because I have to dry it a little bit before I put it back down, squeegeeing off the excess. I'm gonna pull that up. Okay, I'm gonna dry this quick. And plop this one right back down. Hopefully, I'll get the spacing correct. That's always the hard part. This is one of our older alphabets, um, and it doesn't have the, um, the marks to line everything up like our new ones do. So it's a little trickier, but it is what it is, right? Hi, 
Mikey. Oh, guess what I'm making? This is for you. My daughter, the chick's mama, is watching from the beach, I believe. Your little babies inspired this project, Katie. Yeah, I think the spacing was pretty good. Don't let me spell it wrong. <laughs> it is tricky. It's pretty tricky. So we figure the, the chicks that we have, they're only, I don't know, maybe a week old-ish. It takes about six months for them to lay eggs, so she won't need the sign for a little while. Mother hen in the house. Did you see the first part of this, Katie? Look at this. Making a sign for your coop. <laughs> We're hoping they're not all a bunch of roosters, too. That wouldn't be good. Not good. All right, so here we go with the S, the mother hen. She's a mother hen to a lot of creatures and, and children. She has three boys, a dog, two cats, three lizards, a tank full of fish, and six chickens now. Anything else? She used to be a squirrel mama. Ah, Katie, I might just have to get a coop so I can keep the sign. It's pretty cute. Thanks, Cindy. There you are. All right. And the E. And then we're going to put it all together. I think I might just dress it a little bit more. Kind of like that grungy look. And we're going to wire this all together so it hangs nicely. Has anybody else ever had chickens? Okay, I'm gonna close up my jar. I'm done with the black paste. Let's remove that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love it when stuff comes out the way you plan it, even though I just planned this this morning. All right. It really dries quickly. Did you see that? Oh my gosh, I just had another idea. I have a little a little wooden egg I could hang from the bottom here. Oh, how cute would that be? That would be super cute. All right, let's grunge up this baby a little bit more. I've got my black ink here. Let me see what I've got going on here. Your boyfriend grew up on a farm. Oh, thanks, Leslie. We had chickens when we were kids for a while. And um, I was telling somebody the story last night about my our rooster, one of our Chickens ended up being a rooster named Henry, who was beautiful, but obnoxious. And my grandfather had to come over and guess what he had to do. <laughs> um, yeah, we couldn't keep Henry because he was he was very protective of his hens and um, he got really aggressive. So we had to take his head off and grandpa came over and did that and plucked him. And my mother cooked the chicken and none of us could eat it. You cannot name an animal if you name it. can't eat it if you name it, right? I think that's it. So what I'm using right here is Tim Holtz, uh, I think this is called Black Soot Ink. And I have a dauber on my finger. And I'm just going to go around the edges of this sign and just add a little bit more grunge to the edges. We want this to look like a dirty old sign. Can you see how that looks? This adds a lot of dimension when you're doing a, a project. Um, I've used this on paper mostly, but I'm really liking using it on wood too. So you, you don't want to go like straight up and down with it. You want the you want it to kind of feather into the wood piece itself. Otherwise it looks too perfect. And we don't like it that way. 
not when we're trying to make grunge, right? After I'm done with this, I will seal it. I mean, if Katie wants to put it outside, um, you probably would want to seal it. I've had things actually that weren't sealed left outside for a long time and they were they were fine. But you can, Kara, oh my gosh, girl, how are you? Um, you can, I, I do recommend that you seal it. Just use a couple light coats of spray sealer. I'll go around the outer, um, the other edges later. I don't want to keep you guys all day watching me do that, although it is, actually very therapeutic. <laughs> I'll do the front of the egg sign too. What do you think you guys? Kara, I miss you. I haven't seen you in forever. Dumb COVID. All right, so we are grunging up our eggs here. I always tell people to start with a light touch and then go heavier as you like it. So start light. You can always add more, but you can't take it away as easily if you add too much. Good advice, huh? I'm just gonna do the corners up here too. Cause I'm gonna wire this all together and it'll be done. I'll go back and finish that later. So what I'm using here um, is a wire that I uh, use for lots of different projects. I use this for hanging things a lot. It's called uh, Dark. Anal I can't even say that, Analide wire. I just call it dirty wire, and you'll find out why in just a few minutes. What is what stuff called? The ink, it is called Tim Holtz Distress Ink, Black Soot. Black Soot is what I use. I use this one and I use Vintage Photo all the time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of these little screw eyes. I'm gonna need four, oh, maybe more than that. I need a few of these. And I kind of put a little tiny hole in each of the pieces where I'm going to wire this all together. So I just got to screw them in. Like so. Hi, Shelly. Okay, there's one. And we're going to hang this from the top sign. I suppose you could even screw it to your hen house if you had one. I think this would look really cute in your kitchen or a bakery. Hey, Mary, good morning. Um, if the eggs was bigger, you could even use like a, make it like a stackable. But it didn't really work out that way. Okay, so those two there. I'm just gonna pop my website up here, you guys, in case you are wondering where I get all this cool stuff or where you can get all this cool stuff. Um, Chocolate Door has lots and lots and lots of different design transfers. And this one happens to be, what did I write this one down? Happens to be from our vintage truck um, fall add on. There's lots of things on that transfer, like pumpkins and apples and corn stalks. Um, and there's titles that go along with all of those. So it's a really great value if you decide you want to get one. Lots and lots of things on there. Who would have thought I would make a, a sign for a chicken coop with that transfer? <laughs> you so crafty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, I thought of this this morning. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I'm waiting for an order to come in of all new Chocotour products. And hopefully today I'll be getting all my new fall and winter designs. And I'm super excited for those. So, dirty wire, as you can see, destroys your hands. Where's my wire caddies? And I'll deal with that after, but <laughs> I'm going to cut some of this wire. Um, I don't think about that much do. Try to cut two pieces right about the same length. And the tricky part is going to be getting these to hang evenly. That is the big question. Mary, how are you feeling? Mary had some knee surgery. Poor girl. All right, let's try to bend this. 
This is nice and sturdy wire. It is dirty though. I'll warn you. You can get it at Home Depot. Oops, I'm not supposed to say that word. You can get it at a hardware store. <laughs> you guys, hey, thank you for hitting that S-H-A-R-E tab. Um, sprinkling my videos around really helps build my audience and I really appreciate that if you're enjoying watching any of my videos. So I'm gonna leave this really rough looking like that. Let's try it again over here. Let's see if we can get them even or sort of even. You're coming to my house? Awesome! That would be fun. Let's see how that's hanging. Oh my gosh, it's almost perfect. You never know when those things, good things are gonna happen, right? All right, it kind of looks like barbed wire. Actually pretty cool looking. All right, it's rustic. All right, so now the only other thing I'm gonna add is the hanging one. So I'm gonna put a couple more screws in the top. I thought I started a hole there. Guess not. All right, don't laugh, but I'm gonna use my pen to make a starter hole. Really professional here. But it works. Okay. Screw that in. You can buy some pumpkins from me. What do you mean pumpkins? I'm not growing any pumpkins. are coming in way 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 later than you actually say them so I'm not sure why but I can see them later <laughs> if I can't see them now I will see them later pumpkin cutouts oh I have one set coming in Ariel you need to use, learn how to use a scroll saw if you can't get them and then you can make your own oh, this one's gonna be stubborn Come on. Almost there. I must have hit a knot or something. There it goes. Okay, we're back in business. Mary, I'm working on it. I know I miss everybody. Um, if you are new to my group, I live in the Springfield Mass area where I hold hands-on project workshops normally, a lot of them. But um, right now we are pretty much on shutdown, so I haven't been able to, and it's really like driving me crazy because I miss seeing all you guys. Let's see if I can put this wire a little tighter. There we go. Now they're gonna hang crooked. Come on. Shouldn't have done that. Alright, spread it back out. Alright, I'll play with that so it, <laughs> it lays a little bit better. So I just need one more piece of larger dirty wire. I'm gonna need another shower after this project because these are nasty dirty, but they look so good. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna bend that into some sort of a hanger and put it through the loops and just give it a twist. You have many on order. Oh. Mary, I know. I really am working on it. There might be a plan, but I can't talk about it yet. It's a secret. My iPad storage is full. Huh? Getting all kinds of notifications. Not now. I was I was live last week, and um, Facebook decided to update in the middle of my live. Thank you very much. Okay, there we go. Not 100% happy with the way this one looks. I think I can fix that. Let's 
All right, I think we're done. Let's see what you think. I will hang this up and take a picture of it later. Maybe I'll have some little chicks in the picture. What do you think? So I hope you enjoyed this project. Ah, look at my hands. Um, I will be back tomorrow. Actually, I think what I'm going to do tomorrow, I might not go live in the morning, but I might go live maybe um, between 5 and 6 o'clock and do a box opening party because that would be so much fun. You guys want to see the new, the new transfers and surfaces and things? What do you think about that? Um, I've got two big boxes coming in. I cannot wait to pick some new projects. It's time to start thinking about fall. I know we're in the middle of summer, but if you go shopping, what are you going to see? It's Halloween candy and all kinds of stuff like that. So it is actually time to think about fall. Um, so uh, I'm excited to show you what's new. So lunchtime. Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to find out when the best time is for most of my uh, viewers to, to hop on. I love mornings, but it seems like I seem to get more people watching at night. So I might have to change it up just a little bit. So I uh, will probably go live tomorrow later in the day. I'll post a, a notice to let you know a little bit beforehand so you have a little bit of a warning. And then we'll start doing some uh, new projects on, what's today? Tuesday. Thursday. We'll start a new project on Thursday. So thank you so much for watching. Um, this is my website. If there was anything you would like to take a look at, order surfaces, transfers, chalk base, all that good stuff. There's also an area there where you can learn about becoming a designer. If that is something you are interested in, let me know. Um, no obligation, but I'll send you some information. And oh my gosh, if you are local to me, please request to join my VIP group. That is where I'll be posting events coming soon to an area near you, as well as um, my Club Couture, where we do wonderful designs with exclusive transfers every single month. Those are delivered straight to your door, and only club members can get those designs. So just write club in the comments if you're interested in that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day. Leslie, I have a bundle ready for you whenever you're ready, and um, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.